Stephen just an update for us, please. Um, is everybody fit? How did you get on in training? And media in particular, I suppose, was the one we were wondering about. Yeah, everyone everyone is fit. Um, in the squad, obviously, Bar Alameda, who obviously joined him up with the group, but he, w- he won't be involved in the game tomorrow night. But we're hopeful that um, he will be involved later in the week for the game against France. And can I ask you how important the game is for the likes of, of Matt Doherty, who hasn't been playing that regularly? Yeah, and uh, th- listen, we have an, a number of players who've n- not been playing regularly uh, or who've been playing intermittently. And I think tomorrow night's game is, is important, you know, and f- for those players uh, and for us to evaluate where they all are and, um, and for them, them to make an, an impact themselves so they can put themselves into contention for selection against France next Monday whether that be a starters or, or players that can make an impact on the bench and because uh, we need a squad next Monday against France so it's an important game for, for a lot of players and you know we want to utilise it and maximise the opportunity for the players to give ourselves every chance Sorry, Hello Hi Matt, can you just tell us how it's going for you at the moment and what were the reasons behind leaving Tottenham in the first place? Um no, it's going for me well in Spain. It's a different experience completely. Um, different culture, different preparation for games. Um, I'm enjoying enjoying my time there, even though I'm not playing that much. Um, and the reason I left was, well, initially it was just to go on loan for the rest of the season. And obviously we had the the problems with the with the lo- uh, too many loans and stuff like that. So then it was a case of... Um, just I couldn't really say no to, the, to that type of experience and a, a manager of his calibre. Um, look, I always like to kind of challenge myself and be uncomfortable at times. And, and it, it was a similar case there, you know. Um, I didn't have long to think about it, but when the, the time that I did have, it was kind of just couldn't say no to that opportunity. Can I get your thoughts also on um, Antonio Conte's comments at the weekend uh, criticising your former teammates, what you thought of that and whether you think his future there is precarious? Look, I hope he stays for a long time at Tottenham. Um, unbelievable coach, unbelievable manager. He won't say anything in the press that he won't say to his players. Um, completely honest with his players. Um, has the passion for the whole club, you know. Um, so for me, I hope Tottenham sticks stick by him and, and hold on to him for as, as long as possible. He's one of the best managers of all time. Stephen, uh, can I just ask you about Evan Ferguson? There's such a buzz around him at the moment. A lot of good judges saying that he can go all the way to the top. Uh, I presume that you agree with them. And What's your responsibility to try and take some of the pressure off him and, and make sure it's not too much of a burden? Well, his career in his infancy. He's had a you know, great start to his Premier League career and scoring some goals in the Premier League and also in the FA Cup and in the League Cup and uh, you know we've known about Evan for a few years now coming through the system in Ireland with Bohemians and through the underage international team so at 18 years of age now he's shown that he's ready He's ready to come into the team and he will make his debut tomorrow his first start tomorrow night in in the game Stephen, you touched on it a bit there but how how do you approach this tomorrow night? Because in one sense it's a, it's a bit of a dress rehearsal if you like to have Monday, but in another sense, like you said, there's like of Evan or Matt can get some, some games into their legs. So do you think you go with a strong team or, 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 or allow players an opportunity to play? Um, yeah, no, listen, uh, it's, our, we want to, it's our ambition to win the game. All the international games, you can take anything for granted. Uh, while Latvia's ranking is, is low. They've had some very good results. Um, you know, drawn three over Turkey, drawn nil over Norway, beaten Lithuania three one, one nil with Holland. So they've been, they've, they've shown the capacity to put in some good performances. So you have to earn the right in every game, every international game. You have to earn the right. And uh, from our point of view, yeah. We're, you know, we're not some players have we've have to manage some players' loads so they can maximise the performance against France. Like some of the players at the top end of the championship have been in the t- top end of the championship and the FA Cup and they've had three games a week for four or five weeks and you know, bring them in 
playing them again, going again next Monday. Probably not the best way of optim- optimizing that performance. So we have to we have to strategically think about that and and, uh, and give other players an opportunity as well to make sure that squad wise, you know, we're happy where we want we want to be next Monday. So if Evan makes his debut tomorrow, could we expect to see Mikey Johnson at some point? We'll have to wait and see. We'll have to wait and see on that one. Ashton. Stephen, you spoke about how to balance it ahead of the, the France game. But how important is it to get a good performance and to build that confidence within the squad? Yeah, I mean, the, the most important thing is is the game against France next Monday. That's the most important um, part of the week. But but every 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 international game is important, especially really. Um, you know, I'm informed that throughout Europe, sell it out. But in terms of friendly matches, some of the highest crowds in in Europe for the nation, small as ours, we, we, we you know we fill stadiums for friendlies, um, and uh, you know it's the passion or support is really important to us. Um, they're really connected with the team, with the players. Uh, we see the evolution of the squad. And we see the team grow. You see that we're improving, and they're part of that journey as well. I feel, and um, so every game is, is significant, and um, tomorrow is 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 also. A match just for you. You mentioned not getting as much game time as you would like to get yeah. from Madrid. Is that frustrating at times for you? Um. Yeah, it's frustrating at times, but I think uh, I've kind of just learned to. Um, to kind of deal with it. I was at Wolves for a long time where I played every single second of every game. I'm sure there was players at that time too uh, who were trying to get in that were in the same boat. So um, I just think over time I've just become more experienced and just able to deal with it a lot better. Um, look, I'm there for uh, until the end of the season. I'm just using it as a as a learning experience, you know, just improving, playing with world training with world class players every day. You know, I'm just I'm just using the the six months that I have there. To just try and get better, um, try to understand the game better, and just um, and just improve my overall game. What have you made of Evan Ferguson and his performance in the league? Yeah, look, I I believe he's obviously playing very well. Um, I can't say I've seen all of the games, but um, from the highlights and the goals that he's scoring, he's scoring some some good goals with some great composure for somebody who's only 18. Um, so hopefully it's it's going to be the same this this camp and. Um, not only this camp, just f- for him personally, for the rest of the season and and the rest of his career, because I'm sure he's going to have a good one. Gavin Kearney, please. Hey, hi, Matt. Hey, given your relative lack of minutes, do you feel sh- not sharp enough to start against France if, if you are Yeah, I feel sharp. Um, like I already said, I'm training all the time. Um, I think sometimes when you're training with, with top players all the time, that keeps you sharp. Um, so yeah, look for me, it's it's not an issue, uh, especially if we have, have the game tomorrow to to lead into it. My um my brain will be sharp enough to to be able to cope with anything. One from Ed to finish the line. Stephen, how you doing? Hey, I'm just wondering your thoughts on the fixture tomorrow night, where a team like Latvia can come and potentially uh, spoil and defend and frustrate. Is is that a concern for you that you could end up? Uh, in a frustrating night and um, going to such a big game on Monday? <coughs> to be fair to Latvia, they're not really a defensive team. Um, looking at them in terms of some of the matches that they play with a 4 4 2 or 4 4 2 3 1, and they seem to, but you can never tell whether a team comes, teams do play with a lot of respect sometimes, and when they come to the Aviva, they play with a lower block than, than some of the previous matches we've seen. But no, they, they're not, they don't. They're not that defensive a team, and, and uh, they carry a threat themselves. So, yeah, we've just got to focus on our own performance, and uh, and, and you know, on improving ourselves. And um, obviously, with some some players coming into the team, we're looking for them to make an impact, and uh, to increase the you know selection dilemmas for for Monday, which is what we want, and increase the squad options for Monday for players who can make a, a serious contribution. Stephen, you obviously mentioned about Evan's career being in its infancy, but in a way, do you have to set that aside and not think about his age and look at his form and his attributes and just make make that call irrespective of what age he is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we're, we're not shy about playing young players, and I think that's we haven't we haven't been shy about that. And um, but it's not, 
at this when it gets to the games against France, they're, they're important games. You know, it it's it's about the impact the player can have and the, the level of performance. So the age then becomes irrelevant. You know, so it's about who's in form and who who isn't. And do you feel you'd have to change much tactically with him as a starter in the team, or do you? No, I don't really. No, no. Gavin Thomas, please. I was just wondering about um, being in the Delegal squad and the, the form of Griezmann since the World Cup is five goals, five assists, four goals mm. um, in the Liga. And um, what kind of leader is he in the dressing room? What kind of impact does he have on you? Like he's a big leader in the, at the club. Um, he was obviously there before and come back. He's got a great relationship with everybody. Um, I think I was only there two weeks. We had, I mean, had team barbecue at his house. He looked after everybody. So now he's got the respect of everybody um, in, the, in the squad. He, he leads them on the pitch and off the pitch. Um, we know what world class player he is. He's been doing it for years and years. So um, yeah, for, for sure he's going to be someone that we have to to keep our eye on for 90 minutes. And uh, did you pay much attention? I know I know that is the focus, but did you pay much attention to his, what he did for France in the World Cup? Him and Mbappe obviously. Yeah, of course. I watched um, pretty much almost every game. I think I, I was doing this diary for Tottenham at the time, so I was actually watching a lot of the games. Um, so yeah, look, I've seen pretty much everything he does, and um, he does that on a regular basis, uh, regular basis for clubs as well. So um, he's just a world class player, simple as that. Owen Calza, please. Hey, Matt. Do you see this week as a chance to show the manager back there what you can do by playing? Was it a shot window for when this time? No, look. Uh, every, every game, every game. My dad once told me, he "Goes, it never doesn't matter where you are. There's always somebody watching." You know. So, um, look. I think he knows pretty much what I can do. He, if if he sees the tape, if he's um, seen what I've done in, in the past, um, no, I'm not thinking about what I do here. If he if he will see it and if he'll be impressed by it. No, I'm just thinking what I can do here to kind of get the best results possible for for Ireland. And that's it. Do you want to say it? Who knows? Though, let, let's see. Look, I need to get in the team and kind of prove myself there first. Um, look, I'm not um, scared of, of taking leaps, taking challenges, making myself uncomfortable. So, um, I said in a, in a previous interview, it, it doesn't matter what country it is. We'll see. We'll see in in the summer where I end up. But I wouldn't be scared to go to go anywhere. Hello, Quinn. Uh, Stephen, uh, I know that back is tomorrow, but the big game is next Monday. Uh, are you following events in the French camp in terms of retirement injuries and, and now the latest spat over the captaincy? And have you any thoughts on that? And might they might you put a bit of discord in the French camp that maybe we can capitalise on? <laughs> um, <laughs> no, I, I obviously they they have <coughs> been embarrassed under riches in, in relation to their squad, and they, obviously there's some players who have retired. But when you look at their squad, it's all it's. Uh, Real Madrid, Barcelona, PSG, Bayern Munich, essentially, you know, and a lot, all, all of the players are at top European clubs, um, and uh, you know they've been most consistent team in the world over the last eight years, getting to the world two World Cup finals and winning one and and uh, losing the other one on penalties. So, been terrific. Uh, I haven't heard about uh, spat over captaincy. I haven't actually heard that. That's news to me. Like so. Interesting because Matt said that Griezmann is much of a leader over at Denigo and yeah. his nose there the joint that he hasn't got the captaincy. Right. Have you right. heard that, Matt? I heard that, yeah. Yeah, what do you think? Will he be a good captain? Will he have a thought on it? For France? Yeah. Yeah, he'd be a good captain. Um, but I, I, don't, I don't care if he, if he is or not. Nothing to do with me. Well, on, on that front, um, on the captaincy front, so Matt, Matt Doherty will captain Ireland tomorrow. Yeah, yeah he's a good captain. Thank you. I just, I know, I think we might, might try to end the least, Stephen, but I know, have you any thoughts on France Holland? What result might suit, I hope? Yeah. It is hard to know. Obviously, the two, incredibly, France had the second season in their group, which is considered the most consistent team in the world. Over the last eight years, as you said, they're, they're the strongest team. It's, it's difficult to, to fathom that they are second seeds. But Holland, um, obviously, obviously, a great tradition themselves. and So it's, it's interesting. It's difficult to know. From, from our point of view, it's all about ourselves, what we do. And I think that's, that's 
you know, it's, we're at home next Monday, and um, it's good preparation. And the match, having the match on the Wednesday, is what we wanted. Really, we we asked for we asked for the game to get a game on the Wednesday. Last year, we were able to play us on the Wednesday. That was what we wanted to give us the maximum time to prepare for for Monday, and that was that was what we wanted. And um, it's tough actually because the, some of the players have played on Sunday, so it's tough to argue, to play on Wednesday because they're only in Sunday. Some of the players are only in Monday morning or after playing Sunday or whatever. So it is it is tough to play Wednesday, uh, but the greater reward is that we get a better lead in for Monday for the game on Monday. I think that's the reward we wanted. And so tomorrow's game is a good game, and we get ourselves ready for for Monday then. Okay, we've got Aidan then Paul and then that gentleman over. Yeah, just having a couple of teams, it's a long way from the Oscars and Bobby's captain around and the view, just what that means to you. Yeah, look, I obviously got told uh, this morning, um, so actually I've just told my dad, really haven't really told anybody, so um, yeah, look, for me it was obviously, it's obviously a pleasure, a great honour. Um, obviously never done it before, so once he even told me I was a bit, a bit surprised, I didn't expect it, so... Um, no, look, I obviously have to thank him for doing that. I know he believes in me a lot. Um, even though I've not been playing that well, he's always kind of kept in contact. And um, I guess he knows that whenever I've played, I've kind of nev- never let him down. So hopefully that will be the same case tomorrow and, uh, and I can do him proud. And just on the, the challenge of this game, I mean, this time last year, this was the game against Lithuania and one focus would be on, on Belgium is clearly France as the focus. But how do you prepare for this game knowing that you still have to try and do a job against that no, look, for me, like I need, I'm trying to get my uh, my legs and my lungs, you know, get them work, get them going again. Um, it's an important game for me, but it's an important game for everybody who plays, you know. Um, you're playing for Ireland in front of a big crowd at home, um, with the opportunity to kind of play your way into a into a Monday night game against France. So, look, th- whoever plays tomorrow, it's going to be incredibly important for all of them to kind of produce and and play well and and try win a game for your country. Pull ahead, please. Is there, is there any friction with Norwich in terms of Adams and you know, there's interesting to might be here for a week or two and they'll be sticking around? Yeah, no, no, there isn't actually. Um, we have a very good relationship with Norwich and obviously technical director there, Stuart Weber, um, a very good relationship there. I think the medical teams have been liaison, so our doctor, Dr. Sean Carmody, um, has been liaison with the, the Norwich medical team and uh, they're happy for him to come in. You know they were happy to come in, but just there was two issues with Adam. One was his knee problem that had kept him out for so long that initially, um, you know Norwich were would have liked him to have a week's rest uh, after you know after such a he- hectic schedule and and join up later in the week, but then. You know, we were speaking to them about that, and they were fine about him coming in. And then the second one was that he actually got he let, he, he came off injured in the first half of the game last week when a foot injury, and he left the game on crutches and in a boot <laughs> at the time. You know, so he um, but he's determined to come. To be fair, Adam, just great determination. And obviously, that's been passed down through all the great Irish players and. Through, through to our captain Seamus Coleman and and the senior players James McLean's and and Matt and players like that, you know down to the younger players to try and the importance of playing for Ireland, it's hugely important and um, it's a huge priority in their lives and um, so we're delighted to have Adam, Adam. Uh, we'll see how he goes uh, between training later in the week and and whether whether or whether he pa- you know he's. He's fit enough to play, and, and uh, which we expect he should be. Final two questions from yourself and then Mark. Stephen, what is it um, about Matt's personality or even Matt's story to, to get to the position that he's got to in his career that has convinced you to make him count? <coughs> Will I tell them the truth? No, no, no. I think uh, the uh, um, no. I think listen, hasn't hasn't been straightforward for Matt in his career. He's not always, you know, been um, one of the main players for Ireland. He's had to buy his time over the over the years. 
Yeah, he's had to play in League One, come from the League of Ireland, play in League One, play in Scotland, go the hard way and go to League One to the Championship and into the Premier League and play in the Premier League regularly and now with his move to La Liga. So it's been it's been his own personal journey which hasn't been straightforward and he's had to fight hard and adapt, consistently adapt to 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 go up the levels, the various levels and uh, so he he, ha- he has done that very well and listen when we were out in, in Spain in you know could be eight, eight months ago and we had to go and play Hungary and we were a bit light squad wise and there was an issue with Matt injury wise and we just had you know we could have could have easily <coughs> not played in that game. And uh, he was the only senior right back available at the time. And uh, we, he, even though it was a friendly game, just passed himself fit. He was determined to play regardless. And um, we drew the game, and he played played 90 minutes. And you know, it was obvious to us that you know he put the team before himself. But even though we didn't want to be taking a risk, it's not that we wouldn't take a risk with him. But um, a lot of players would have would have not played. Yeah, but he 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 was determined to play. And finally, Mark McCadden, please. Steve, how did John Chase settle into your role? Yeah, he's brilliant. John is, um, you know, such a great humility, and uh, and he gets all great with all the staff and the players. They all very popular, but he's that's not where you point him. You point him because he can make incisive contributions to uh, how we, you know, to all aspects of everything we do. We want, to con- we want him to contribute, and we want him to speak his mind, and we want him to disagree if he if he disagrees, and uh, we encor- encourage open dialogue, and we encourage, um, you know, debate on issues. So, you know, he's uh, he's a good coach. Perfect, guys. Thank you very much for your time today, and we'll see you.